Berlin, Oslo, Seattle, Columbus and Chicago, Lithuania, Spain, Portugal, Australia. <laughs> this is just last year, and there's probably a few I'm forgetting. Nobody has given more lectures than I have in the last 20 years about graphic design. There's not even a close second. got really big, I decided that it was more important for me to experience the world than it was to sit in an office and make a lot of money. It was down here visiting a different island, and it was Christmas Day, I remember. Got up and looked out here at this point, and there was a little wave breaking. I borrowed a board and put on a Santa Claus hat and paddled out, and I had a blast. Things were crazy. I happened to be cash rich at the time. Bought the house sight unseen. I didn't know how to buy a house. I never bought a house. I bought my vacation house before I'd ever owned a real house. It's just like every surf kid's dream, or certainly was mine. It's been 17 years now. For the longest time, it was kind of a bachelor, aging surf kid house. It's still somewhat that. I went through probably what some Americans do anyway when you go to the Caribbean. I tried to go Caribbean. I had a lot of these tiki's shipped down here at great expense. This might call for some shades. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> hmm. Maybe someone will see this and send me a new pair of sunglasses, but in the meantime, the property goes right to the water. I really get a lot of enjoyment just watching the moods, especially when there's waves starting to come in, watching the tops of the coconut trees kind of dance. It's really hard for me to be up here. Anytime I hear anything at all, it's a quick look to see if I should be out there. It doesn't take much to get me out there. My life before graphic design, it was surfing. It was all I did. I was ranked eight or nine. But the world in surfing competition at that point revolved around California, so it's quite a bit different than it is now. Every year, I bring a couple surfboards down. Last year, I decided, geez, I got so many, and just painted them all white. and. Uh, Again, it's hard for me every time I hear a wave breaking. I go. <laughs> Always fun to start the season off with a new board, or two, or three, or four. You're looking at 10, 12 boards here, or whatever, but you know the white ones out front. There's another 12, 15, and there's some downstairs. I had a period a few years back where I thought there's way too many. Took them around with some friends and sold them, just for some extra cash while I was down here. I remember it reminds me of junior high, maybe high school, maybe even college, but it was always cooler to carry your books up like this when I was in college. <laughs> Not down like everybody else did, but you know, us cool guys. Anyway. Over the years, I've done magazines out of here, a lot of corporate work. Occasionally, clients, I don't mention that I'm sitting in my house in the Caribbean. I know, sometimes I think that's not the best thing to tell somebody. Oh, there comes my wife. <laughs> yeah, you're being filmed. You don't have any sunglasses, do you? With Raygun Magazine, when I finished an issue, I sent it to the printer. Nobody had to okay it. Nobody had to see it. During the later issues, I would be doing something and I would think, this is going to really piss them off. And I would do it for no other reason. <laughs> oh, master bedroom. Not too much in there. Uh, one of my surf heroes when I was a young teenager, a guy named Mickey Dora, and a couple original prints when I was art director at Surfer Magazine. 
Somebody did a book on his life and entitled it All for a Few Perfect Waves. There's some overlapping there with my story, probably. I think it's worth noting that this is my wallet. This was a gift for my daughter more years ago now than I probably want to admit, and she made it out of duct tape, and it had a picture of a guy surfing, and then I've just never been able to quite get away from it. Beach Culture Magazine is probably the work I'm most proud of. So I did every issue as though it might be the last one, and we got six issues. Sometimes I wonder what the seventh one would have looked like. Oh, well, these are kind of interesting coconuts, and they're really tricky to get into. Otherwise, they work kind of good as footballs. Try to get a good spiral, hope. The groundskeeper wasn't down there, didn't get hit. <laughs> a little overgrown. Ta da! No problem. <laughs> get a little breeze. And listen and see if there's any waves coming. A peaceful place to work. I tend to keep a kind of a Messy desktop, I guess. Um, actually, a little more organized than usual. But again, I think if, if these were super organized and clean, somehow the work would be different. And uh, when I quit teaching, I took my retirement fund and bought this old Porsche with it. <laughs> so I was broke, but I had a cool car. A few years ago, I bought a Land Rover and realized it just sat for most of the year. So. Now, instead of the car, I just have the cup. <laughs> it's a long way down. One of the hardest things out here when the service is good is to come in. It's just you know there's going to be another good wave. So many days I've paddled in when it's completely dark. I hear it all night. I can't sleep because I hear the waves breaking. And... I've been toying with this idea for a while. But I found this, this uh, waterproof diver's flashlight. So I'm gonna experiment with taping this to my wrist. And then I bought these kind of cheap waterproof uh, lights for hikers and stuff to go on your head. And I'm gonna see if I can't surf at night out here. Maybe while you're here, you'll see a little light going down the point, I hope. <laughs> Thrill doesn't quite do it. There's an excitement, there's an athletic something. It's indescribable. Sometimes I enjoy just going straight with the wave and feeling the wind on my face. Just to jump into the water the first time on the board and take a few paddles, you almost feel the stress coming off you. All the crap or stuff you're worried about, you can pretty much leave it on shore. side of things and if I was probably the work would be different because I'm different it would be a different person if I was organized and into the business end and a real wheeler and dealer and that's uh, <laughs> not, clearly not me and I've made a point to make trips down here pretty much any time there was serve at great expense because a lot of last minute flights a lot of turmoil in terms of money, job, relationships, things that were either messed up or lost because of this kind of obsession with surfing and getting waves. I've certainly lost some jobs by coming down here to get surf. I've blown off a few lectures because there's waves. You say probably affected a relationship or two <laughs> and strained relations with family members thrown in there. So yeah, it's, it's, but I still believe it was all worthwhile. You know, I go back to Southern California or New York or anywhere and there's people who surf, but to me, they're living around the surf culture and they're buying the things, but they're not really doing it. 
maybe I didn't come down here to hang out with people from places I was escaping from. <laughs> You know, people here aren't here to surf. They're here because they like to sail, they're hiding from something or whatever it is, and they used to surf. It's really early. The wind's right, the predominant wind's offshore, that's what we've got. The surf is trying to build. I have a new book ready, and I took it to one publisher, and they said, well, this is kind of cool, but you know, we're thinking, why don't you do kind of a greatest hits book? And I said, no, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> I have to make a few more hits and maybe, but I don't know. So I don't, yeah, I just don't question what I do. And I've been very busy since a lot of the work that people know. Everything's different. You're different, I'm different, the world's different. Why try to recreate something that existed in its own time and place and is past, it's over, it, it did its thing. The best design does come from being very intuitive. I've always relied on just my intuition, my sensibility. For some reason, I know that this looks better than that. People will say, we have to know the rules to break them, and I just simply do not believe that. I never knew the rules, and other people said, you're breaking them. Well, it worked out pretty well. You know, it's one thing if I had just been retired and surfing only in the Caribbean, living off this old work, but I don't feel that's the case. The best work is actually still coming. That love and passion allowed me to purchase this house on a perfect surfing break and get back to surfing without leaving design. I don't see any signs of it slowing down. If anything, it seems to be revving back up again. <laughs> and surfing, I'm still trying to improve. I'm still trying to get better equipment. I'm still working on better cutbacks and better turns and better tube rides. And, but I'm still riding a short board and I will as long as I can. And today, right now, it's, you know, the waves are predicted to come up this afternoon, so I'm hoping. <laughs> I have to think if I had never surfed, the design would be a bit different. I'm most in the moment if I'm totally involved in a design project, music on, I'm just right there. Next thing I know, the day's gone. The only other time I fully feel that is when I'm surfing, when I'm riding a wave. You really have to be thinking of nothing else. But as long as I can surf at a reasonable level and, and have fun, 